Thank you, Margaret. Pray that I would speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm sure any of my friends from theological college would laugh when they um, see that there's a 5.45 a.m. service outside on Easter Day, um, because everyone that knows me, particularly in my younger years, will know that I'm not an early bird at all. When I, when I was at Theological College, we had to be at morning prayer every morning at 7.30, and this was not easy for me. It wasn't compulsory, but we were told that it was a firm expectation. <laughs> which really meant compulsory, obviously. Expectations, in my experience, can cause confusion. Um, at school now, Alid's report will say that he's at his age expected um, you know, level. Um, it's, it, I think it can be confusing because we all expect different things, don't we? We all have different expectations that we put on others, that others put on us. Today, as we think about Palm Sunday and Jesus' triumphant, triumphant entrance into Jerusalem, I want us to think about expectations and the problems that come when our expectations are skewed, especially when it comes to our relationship with God. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, for the Passover celebrations, people had all sorts of expectations about him and about what his arrival meant and about what they expected to happen. They all got it wrong, dramatically wrong. Shouts of Hosanna and welcome became words of death as crowds shouted, crucify him. Picture the scene, it's not that difficult. Don't think about the scooter, think about um, a donkey. Picture the scene, palms waving, Jesus sat on a donkey, crowds of people uh, pressing in. Uh, think of London when there's a big event, a royal wedding, people pressing in on every side. I don't know about you, but it seems a bit weird to me that people were waving branches of tree in the street. I'm, I'm really proud of Caroline walking around with the young people. I felt a bit of a banana just stood there with my, um, with my palm there. It seems strange, doesn't it, that people were waving bits of tree in the street. But palm branches in Jesus's day were really significant. They were a symbol of Jewish nationalism. The closest thing I can think of it now would be people with huge St George's flags waving them in the street. Historically, the Jewish people had been oppressed many times and taken over many times. And this was all focused around Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the city to be conquered. Thinking of what's going on in the world now, Jerusalem was like the Kiev of uh, Israel. And it was very important to the Jewish people. Over time, Jewish people did sometimes overcome this opposition that they were facing. And when that happened, they would celebrate their liberation by waving palm branches. So in a sense, palm branches aren't only like a St. George's flag, they're also thinking of Churchill, like that they're also a victory sign to the people of Israel. Just as we have the Queen's head on our coins um, and on our notes, Jewish coins had palm branches embossed on them. Jesus entering Jerusalem to the waving of palm branches, the crowds celebrating, showed that they were full of expectation that he would overcome. 
At the time of Jesus, Jerusalem was once again occupied. The Jewish people were once again oppressed, this time by the Romans. And the people waving their palms was a clear sign that their hope was that Jesus would overthrow the Romans. That's what they expected. And that cry of Hosanna, echoing Psalm 118, was a cry for salvation, salvation from the oppression of Rome. Hosanna means save us now. Hosanna was often shouted when a victorious army returned from battle. The people's expectations of Jesus were high. When they stood there with their palms, for many of them, they were welcoming a national liberator. They didn't see the full picture. They were too busy with their palms to see what Jesus was trying to say to them by choosing to enter Jerusalem on a donkey. A donkey is a working animal used by everyday people, working class people. The donkey symbolized the opposite of overthrow and rebellion. I was listening to Lecture 365 this morning and um, whoever's leading it said, you know, it wasn't a war horse, it wasn't a mighty steed. It wasn't like big political leaders these days that arrive in huge armoured cars. Jesus chose to arrive in Jerusalem on a donkey, a working animal used by everyday people. Donkeys were a sign of humility, signs of obedience. They were the complete opposite sign. They were saying the complete opposite to the palm branches. Part of the donkey's role was to fulfill the prophecy of Zechariah that Mo shared earlier. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey. The following verse is, he will proclaim peace to the nations. By riding the donkey as he entered into Jerusalem, Jesus was revealing that he was here, was there as king, but not a military king. He was arriving as a humble king, arriving as a king to bring about peace, a peacemaker, not there to crush the Romans, but to bring peace to the nations. We know because we've been blessed to experience it. He was there to bring peace between people and God. Jesus' mission was not going to fill the expectations of the people. The crowd all had their own agenda and expectations, as we do. And that's a question this morning. What, what are your agendas? What are your expectations? There were people with a political agenda, To them, Jesus was a warrior king, like King David, come to crush their enemies. To the disciples, not just the 12, but the group, gradually growing group of people who had faithfully followed him throughout the countryside, those who knew him, who'd had conversations with him, those who had seen the depth of his love for people, those who had seen his compassion, his humility. 
those who are chosen to follow him, to love him in response to his love. Their expectations too were crushed. A week later, they would be grief stricken at his death. There were other people, I'm sure, people just going with the flow, people who've gone just to be nosy. I remember um, when we first arrived in Warminster, it feels like ages ago now, and our, the carnival was on. I didn't know you had a carnival. And we were walking up past Morrison's and we just could see all these people heading up. So we didn't know what it was, but we just followed. And the kids loved it. It was great, but we didn't know that was happening. We just saw something was happening. So we went along with the flow of people walking up uh, Weymouth Street and stood at the side of the road with everyone else. And, and watched the carnival. We were not expecting it. And I'm sure there were people there um, who weren't expecting anything, were just going with the flow, trying to see what was going on. Not really involved, but just spectators. Maybe there were others in that crowd who weren't quite where the followers were, but who were beginning to realise that there was more to Jesus. People with questions, people wanting to know him more. A crowd of people with different agendas and different expectations, looking to this one man, this humble and peaceful man riding on a donkey. Where would you place yourself in that crowd? Where are you in relation to Jesus right now? Do you have an agenda for what Jesus should do in you, through you, in the world? Thinking of Jesus, whose only words when speaking about himself, his character were that he was lowly, and gentle of heart. Do our agendas and expectations, are they in line with who Jesus is? As we begin this Holy Week, I pray um, for me, I'm always preaching to myself as well. Pray for us all that, that we would fix our eyes on him afresh that we would remember who he is rather than what we expect him to be, rather than placing on him the things that we want him to be about, that we would remember who he truly is this week, that this time next week as we celebrate um, the resurrection, we would be in the prime position to share in his work of liberation, to enable all people to be at peace and in relationship with the Father and to know his love for them personally. Amen. <laughs>